Good morning, everyone. Good morning, classmates. Good morning, Dr. Abante. I am Zando Salazar, and I will be reporting the first part of the Enterprise Application for Achieving Operational Excellence. Enterprise Resource Planning, or we coined as ERP, is a platform companies use to manage and integrate essential parts of their businesses. You can think of an enterprise resource planning system as the glue that binds together the different computer systems for a large organization. Without an ERP application, each department would have its system optimized for its specific tasks. With ERP software, each department still has its system, but all of the systems can be accessed through one application with one interface. At its core, ERP is an application that automates businesses, business processes and provides insights and internal controls drawing on a certain central database that collects inputs from departments. As shown here, we could say that ERP is a web of a system within the company. An ERP software system can integrate planning, purchasing, sales, marketing, finance and human resources and other departments. Once all depart departments are tied into the system, all data is collected on the server and become instantly available to those with permission to use. Reports can be generated with metrics, graphs, or other visuals and aids a client may need to determine how the business and its department are performing. For example, uh, first uh, photo here is the customer web portal. Once the customer placed their order in the business website, it will be prompted to the purchasing or the sales department. If the business have adequate number of inventory, uh, they could proceed to the sales department. Otherwise, uh, the purchasing will need to manufacture or uh, acquire a number of invoice to uh, based on the based on the order of the customer. Once the inventory is uh, okay with the sales department or the purchasing department, it will then transfer to distribution uh, department. So it will be logistically transferred to uh, to customers. Then once this is distributed, uh, other administrative branch or administrative departments such as finance will be also advised of the successful transaction. So the finance or the accounting manager or head will then record the sales transaction in their books of ledger or accounts. And the dashboard will be the, the main interface or the, the, the main screen of this ERP system. As per the time projects here, uh, time projects refer to the time or the task that is or that was saved or uh, used utilized by each employees for their for their daily time shifts. We do have also the advantages of the ERP. First is an ERP system solves this problem by compiling information in a central database to grant managers and employees cross-departmental visibility. Integrating, integrating and automating business processes eliminates redundancies and improves accuracy in productivity. In addition, departments with interconnected processes can synchronize work to achieve faster and better outcomes. Second pros is it, is also, it also eliminates the problems that comes with conflicting source of data and empowers them to analyze various scenarios, discover process improvements, and generate major efficiency gains. Some businesses benefit from the enhanced real-time data reporting from a single source system. We could say then that ERP is the real unity between departments. Departments are better able to collaborate and share knowledge, a new synergized workforce can improve productivity and employee satisfaction as employees are better able to see how each functional group contributes to the mission 
and the vision of the company. If you do have uh if you do have the disadvantages, you also have the disadvantages or the cons of ERP. First is the system cost. Of course, uh transitioning to ERP system is not that cheap and it will uh incur additional expenses to the company. Second is the learning curve. It is it refers to the training or the adjustment of the staffs, the manager and the uh blue coral blue collar employees that will use the, the system. Of course, uh, I think this is one of the hard part of transitioning to ERP, the conserve, conversion and the migration. If you're using an old system, it will also give you an give you a adjustment pain in converting the, the old files in and then then transitioning to ERP. And of course, after the conversion, uh, you also have the maintenance. Next in our topic is the supply chain management system. Supply chain management is the management of loaves, goods, and services, and includes all processes that transform raw materials into final products. It involves the active streamlining of a business, supply side of activities to maximize customer value and gain a competitive advantage to the marketplace. This SCM system benefits the companies by managing a variety of supply chain processes such as procurement, planning, product or service creation, order fulfillment, and order management. And these are the SCM or supply chain management processes. First is the supply chain planning. To get best result from SEM, the process usually begins with planning to match the supply with customer and manufacturing demands. Firms must predict that their future needs will be able will be and act accordingly. Second is the sourcing or the procurement. Efficient SEM processes rely very heavily on strong relationship with suppliers. Sourcing entails working with vendors to supply the raw materials needed throughout the manufacturing process. Third one is the manufacturing. At the heart of the supply chain management process, the company, the company transforms raw materials by using machinery, labor, and other external forces to make something new. This final product is the ultimate goal of the manufacturing process. Though it is not the final stage of the supply chain management, we also have the delivering or the logistics. Once products are made and sales are finalized, a company must get the products into the hands of its customers. The distribution process is often seen as a brand image. Contributor, as up until this point, the customer has not yet interacted with the product. And lastly, the after sales services or commonly known as returning. Supply chain management process concludes with support for the product and customer returns. This return process is also called as reverse logistic and the company must ensure it has the capabilities to receive the return products and correctly assign the refunds for returns received. So here is an example of the supply chain uh, management map. So as mentioned, it will start with planning, the logistics management, then the third one is the manufacturing technology. Fourth one is the product life cycle management and the logistics management. So now we'll differentiate the ERP versus the SCM, the enterprise resource planning versus the supply chain system. First is the nature. Uh, ERP is considered as transactional. ERPs are great by at reporting a company's daily transaction in making that information accessible between departments. As mentioned before, it will go to the uh, procurement and sales department to logistics up to the finance uh, finance managers. Whereas the SCM is more of collab collaborative one. SEM excel at collaborative workflows and building networks interconnected stakeholders in the supply chain. There are instances that in SEM uh, suppliers are also have uh, 
also have access to the system. As per the data collection, ERP only refers to internal data. ERPs are well suited at recording, processing, and reporting on well understood internal business information. Whereas, in a better sense, SEM uh, includes external data. SEM integrates the data from multiple external partners and rationalizes rationalize it for management across the supply chain. Lastly, for the process coverage, uh, ERP is more of the standard model, whereas the SEM is more the specialized one. The uh, supply chain management specializes in detailed processes within the supply chain, such as buying, sourcing, production, quality management, and sus sustainability, and compliance. Thank you for listening. And uh, the other reporter will tackle the latter part of this topic. Thank you. Again, I am Zandro, and thank you, Tina Bante Classroom.